Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from wherever you are watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now for those who have been following the politics of Deputy President William Ruto, you will learn that Ruto is trying to apply the tactics that Moi was using while he was in power. Look on how Ruto started the UDA party, the dishing out of wheelbarrows, washing machine and all those other things giving out of handouts in his rallies, having meeting after meeting in Karen. Then when you go to the meeting, you know you will come out with something. All this was supplied by Moi during his regime. Especially when Moi went further to form a group that was referred to YK92. Akiwa na kiongoziaka kitwa Cyrus Jirongo. The other people in that group included Patrick Msumba, Michael Kageni, Sam Nyamea, Gareth Bomet, and others. These are the people Moy was using. And their work was to promise Kenyans and the youth in this, in this country about the new country, the new Kenya that will give jobs. And at the same time, they were giving handouts. And that's how Cyrus Jirongo was named after 500 shillings. Because, you know, 500 by that time it was big money. That is the money they were giving. Now, having YK92, if you compare to what Ruto in Kenya Kwanza are doing as of now, there is a merge of YK92 in 2022. It is openly coming. And today, if you watch the post that was shared by ANC party. It tells you that Ruto is regrouping YK92 in 2022. I want us to go through that post and I'm going to explain to you how we might have another Moi in 2022 if Ruto will become the president. Now, this is what ANC shared. The YK22 led by Honorable Samuel Masaki UDA, Amira, Abu Wahab, ANC, Youth Leader Chair, Kennedy, Sankara, Secretary General YK22, and the Youth League leaders from 12 political parties affiliated to Kenya Kwanza Coalition. Today held a press conference where they asked ICT, CS Joy Mucheru, and Security CS Fred Matiangi to resign forthwith and a stop, me, stop taking political side by publicly supporting a Zemio presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. They voted to use all necessary means within the law to eject the two cabinet secretary and uh, force them to relinquish their respective offices. Also present were Patron Honorable Mafaka and ANC Director of Political Affairs Omulo Jr. <laughs> so you see now they are calling it YK22. That means they are trying to adopt YK92 in the current political situation. Now we are continuing with our pilot discussion. But before we go on, that's a quick request. You might be watching this channel, but you're not yet subscribed. So my humble request, please consider subscribing so that any other time, once you release a video like this one, you will always get notified. Again, to all our channel subscribers and anyone who drop comment, I must say thank you so much for your unconditional support. Again, I'm requesting you to give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube can recommend our videos to more viewers. Back to our discussion. Now, I think YK92 came into existence when once the when the multipartism was reintroduced, remember they removed multipartism, and again Moy was forced to return it when people pushed him. So many groups were lobbying for this, including bishops who were beaten up Akina Joya. So many people, the university students, they were beaten, they were brutalized. Some people were killed when they were fighting for introduction of multipartism. So Moy went to form this group with the help of other stakeholders within Kanu Party so that they can help him to continuously control the country. Because now he was to go into elect election to face other people. 
And the YK came in to mobilize numbers behind Moy. And so the main job for this group, because Moy was failing, at that time no one would want to have Moy to continue leading the country. It wants to blackmail the Kenyan people, the youth who are in big numbers, that the only time to change the country, it was in 1992, because we are going to have a kind of fresh, <laughs> where they were promising jobs, they were promising opportunities, and they were promising change in the economy. But at some time when they were doing this, they were giving out handouts. But when Moi got to win the election the second time, what happened? Nothing changed. It was simply a group to help Moi to retain power. Compared to what William Ruto has been doing, he has been dishing out money, handouts, in every rally he has gone to, millions of money, Ruto has given out. He went to an extent of here and giving out wheelbarrows, the washing machine, the car washing machines, and so many other things. This is the same tactic Moy used. But once Ruto will get to power, because the same Ruto was there in 1992, when other people were fighting for change, Ruto was supporting the regime. When the people were being brutalized, Ruto was enjoying the power protection from the regime because he was supporting what Kano was doing. Now assume you elect the same Ruto. What do you expect? Because he's applying all the tactics that Moi used in his regime. Now they're introducing Kenya Kwanzaa, 90, Kenya Kwanzaa 2022. <laughs> that is a replica of YK 1992. From YK 1992 to KK 2022. What do you expect if Ruto wins this election? Now that he has tried to apply every tactic Moy was using in 1992 and the rest of the time he was in power, what do you expect from William Samuel Ruto and now that he has his running he met Rigatha Gachagua. Rigatha Gachagua was then a DO during those times. <laughs> and what was the work of DO? To implement the orders from the president. What are the orders? Wakimambia toa polisi waende kupiga watu Kazi Arigatha Gashaga was to give orders to the police, the security forces, to go and deal with those people who were not supporting Moi. The brutalization of Kenyans, people who suffered in the hands of President Moi's government during that regime. Some of the people who were giving orders to police, who were forcing police to do those all brutal things, there were people like Rigade Gashagwe who happened to be a running mate to William Samay Ruto in this election. So number one, we have one person who was championing for Moi regime and number two, a person who was implementing Moi orders. Now these two have come together. They are seeking power to be elected to lead this country. What do you expect from these two? <laughs> for them the issue like reformist agenda is a vocabulary to them they don't know that that's why they have always defended anything they have been against anything that has come to change the constitution for betterment of this country 2010 constitution when Raila was pushing for that Ruto was against he want to maintain the status quo. What Moy had planted is what Ruto would want to have. Why was he against the 2010 constitution? Why has Ruto been against the BBI? Yet at the tail end, he come in and bring the position of prime minister and he promised to give it to Salim Davant when BBI was ready to put it in the constitution. 
Why is he against that? It means Ruto is looking to being a powerful president with absolute power so that he can lead Kenyans the same way Moi was doing to be the center of power and to be the only man who give order in this country. If Ruto will be elected the president, remember what statement he issued when Maraga nullified the election? Aliwaitawakora. He said, Maraga, you have had the, your day. It is our time. We will have our day. He threatened them. Assume now he become the president. Now he's bringing in the KK22. What will our judicial go through? Ruto might suffocate the judiciary. And that is the only hope Kenyans have as of now. This is the only place where they have told President Huru Kenyatta openly when he is wrong. They have made rulings without fear. But if Ruto assumes power, and the way he has been reacting and how he's conducting himself, it means we will have another Moi who would want to have the control of the judiciary and every arm, including the National Assembly. <laughs> so that is the kind of team we are having now. So in the in one hand, we have the people with the reformist agenda, people who have tested, tried, and they have been proved to be the defender of common manage. In the other hand, we have people who have been eh, defending the brutal regime, the people who have been championing for Moi, Moism, a government that brutalizes Kenyans. And by the way, if Ruto becomes the president, the way he's giving out handouts, I think Kenyans might suffer the same fate we are seeing in Sri Lanka where now the Prime Minister is forced to print money to pay civil servant. Ruto will start printing money in Kenya. And that is how the shilling is going to de depreciate totally. Because if you become a leader of handouts, a leader who is not encouraging people to work, a leader who cannot provide an enabling environment for everyone to do their business to earn a living, then what do you expect? Remember when Moi was giving 500 shillings that time, he printed money and the economy suffered. That is where Sri Lanka is now. 2022 after this general election, if Ruto become the president, in one year time, I predict Kenyan suffering the same fate we see in Sri Lanka. I don't know what to think about this, but that's my view. Otherwise, thank you so much for listening to me up to this far. May good God bless you and see you in our next video.